Hey, I'm Aaron. And I'm Jonathan. And you're listening to Part the Mist. A podcast by a pair of ADF druids here in Portland, Oregon. And this is our bonus episode number three, talking about the uh, Midsummer Ritual we just had. Nordic Midsummer Ritual. We are also here with the two individuals that led that ritual, um, Amber and David. Hi, I'm Amber. I am the dedicant study group leader for our grove and the one of the leaders of the Midsummer Ritual. Hi, I'm David. I am the Paris Warden for our grove and also co-led this ritual, as well as we'll be doing Lunasa with Arn here um, coming up next month. Which is going to be awesome, <laughs> but we'll be able to talk about that one after that one's done. <laughs> <laughs> So, really, we're here to tell you how things went uh, for the awesome midsummer uh, ritual we got, we just had. How do you guys feel it went? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it went fantastic, um, but uh, what was more important was uh, a lot of the conversations that I heard from our guests afterward was that it was well-received by at least, I don't know, five or six people I talked to, so that made me feel a lot more confident about what we did. Um, I had a lot of fun with all the extra elements that got added into it. Um, we uh, constructed a uh, world tree, Yggdrasil, um, as a uh, walking sun pole, so that when we made our uh, toasts up to Suna, we had this 10 pound wooden pole that looked like a tree that had a, a wooden round painted with the sun at the top and ribbons streaming down. And it had Radatuk, the little, little squirrel in the middle, <laughs> which was quite fun. Um, it was, it was nice to be able to do, like, a woodworking project for a high day. We haven't actually – I haven't had the opportunity to do that in the past, so that was a really cool element that I liked a lot. Absolutely, and we couldn't have asked for better weather. It was beautiful outside all day. Gorgeous and sunny, absolutely. I know I saw quite a few comments on Facebook afterwards as well talking about how well the ritual went, how much they appreciated it. Um, and including, I, I don't know if it was related, but it just happened to be on the same day. Somebody else posted in the Lunasa event, uh, applauding what we were doing with ADF. So, oh, cool. Yeah. I haven't um, seen that yet. <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. I know one of the big comments I got, and it made me glow a little bit inside, was, um, we, I'm not as familiar with a lot of the Norse terminology and pronunciations, so I spent a great deal of time while writing this ritual to actually break down things phonetically so that we could pronounce them a little more uh, accurately than just reading them. <laughs> and uh, a lot of the individuals that are more familiar with the Norse path, they I, I got a lot of good comments being like, wow, you guys actually took the time to learn how to say the words right. I was like, yes, we did a good thing. <laughs> Uh, one of the elements that we added to the ritual this time was uh, we actually sang a song in Scandinavian, which, I mean, speaking as... Swedish. Oh, sorry, in Swedish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is a Scandinavian language. Yes. <laughs> um, but speaking as, uh, you know, the, the bard leader, I thought that was a really fun element. I was singing it all... all <laughs> The cleanup afterwards. Hey uh, Amber, would you like to sing this song? You probably still have it memorized. I could. I'd be singing it really loud. That's fine. No, I, I can That's sing fine. It. All right, let's, sing it. It. let's okay. hear you sing it. Okay. <laughs> so this is a uh, um, this is a uh, this is taken directly from the Poetic Eda, and so this is a very more accurate element that we added to our ritual. Um, this was a song rendition by Duvelspack. Um, that I found on YouTube, and the lyrics were listed, and so we could adapt this for our ritual. And we sang this uh, three times, once just by myself, second time with our co-leader David joining me, and then the third time we had the bards join in and all of our guests in the audience as well. So a really powerful and really great moment. Oh, and now I'm a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you so, got this. <laughs> okay. So, song goes. Us. Gvedia standa he tirik Haur bauth moraizing gvik taore Vaden koma doik Vavesi dala fat la stendre virgret Fjurda brukni 
beautiful. <laughs> um, and we will post a link to a YouTube video in the show notes if you're interested in checking out the instrumental uh, version that was done by the band whose name I'm not going to try to pronounce. <laughs> Google's back. <laughs> no, it's great. I've actually, uh, I found the song way before this ritual, and it's actually something that I, and then they repeat the same song over and over and over with a drum beat, mm-hmm. and then they turn it into a round, and be, and the drum beat's in the background too. So it becomes like a really like great trance work song for myself to help mm-hmm. me get in the spirit of, of Norse culture and everything, so. It's also something that Amber's kind of been getting me after me to do since, like, day one of Bardic Group was, hey, let's sing songs at each ritual. It's in, like, the the hearth culture language. I might already be looking at short Gaelic songs and long Gaelic songs. <laughs> but I, I thought it was an absolute blast. I loved learning the song, and I felt like it really helped add to, like, raising the energy during the ritual really brought people back to it too because we had the the story of Suna directly before this so after having kind of a the, the lengthy story piece something to raise Six energy after time. that <laughs> was just really wonderful yeah um and then one of the other things that we did that was kind of unusual was uh we kind of uh, we ended up bringing people in uh, as a you know hey we're about ready to get started doing our ritual overview um and in order to do that, Amber and I got up and sang a song that's been called the Pagan National Anthem. Um, <laughs> good choice, yeah, good reason. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's called We Won't Wait Any Longer. I'm sure it's something that you've heard before. Uh, but again, check out in the show notes for a link to that song. Uh, it was an absolutely beautiful song, really powerful moment. I think I think people really dug that. It was also good uh, crowd control, too, because everyone's yeah, usually talking and stuff like that, and people now have to pay attention before I do the uh, pre-ritual briefing. Yeah. Otherwise, everyone's just kind of still talking and stuff like that. So I think that's probably something we should probably do ex- <laughs> for most of our rituals. I was yeah. going to say, I love that. Our five-minute warning, we have a couple bards or all the bards in the future come mm-hmm. out, sing a song as everybody's getting seated. Mm-hmm. Definitely the... Hey guys, we're getting ready to start. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and we can sing longer songs during that time. It's not yeah. just a short little little <laughs> prayer in the middle of ritual. This could actually be a full multi-chorus, mm-hmm. multi-verse as, song. As much as I love the little prayers, it's nice to be able to sing a full song every once in a while. Agreed. <laughs> so, uh, anything else? Um, one thing that I kind of wanted to add was since Emilk this year, we started doing little takeaway tokens for our guests and we kind of got to blame Kirk for this because Kirk (laughs) started it by bringing a whole bunch of Bridget crosses and giving them out to all of our guests, which was impressive because we had like 80 people at that ritual and thankfully he had enough to go around. But every ritual since we've realized that there's a lot of love for this. Our guests get to take something home Mm -hmm. with them and it's either imbued with the spirit of that high day or just a token of their experience. And so the last couple rituals, we've, we've come up with different things that we can bring back. So spring equinox, we had uh, headbands that were woven with specific colored ribbons. Um, Beltane, we had little fairy bags that had little like key charms or door charms and feathers and little rocks and stones and stuff. And then for midsummer, I sat there for the longest time thinking, well, what can be our takeaway for a Norse midsummer? I was like, we could do charms again. I could go get a sun charm, or I could go and uh, recycle ideas and do ribbons or something like that again. But nothing quite felt right. And uh, for myself, I'm a, I'm a crafty individual, so I, I actually had to take out all of my craft supplies and throw them out on the floor and just sat there and looked at them all. <laughs> and I was like, all right, something will come to me. And I found, like, this big, huge box of yarn, thinking, okay, old world tools, yarn, uh I normally sew, I do the woodworking stuff, and as soon as, I, as soon as I realized that I had this big box of yarn, I was like, I'm going to make a whole bunch of yarn pom-pom balls that are, like, palm-sized, out of bright yellow yarn. So I hand-strung, what was it, 57 or so pom-poms, which we had excess, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> but I made all of these, like, palm-sized uh, pom-pom balls out of bright yellow yarn, and we called them sun fuzzies. <laughs> 
which was fun. And so at the at the end of the ritual, like I handed out everybody uh, one of the uh, sun fuzzies, and then we cupped them with our hands and all held them up to the sun and charged them with the energy of the right of the sun god or you know sun goddess of the day and individual sun gods and goddesses and everything. And it was just a really powerful moment because we did a tuning at the same time. Mm -hmm. Again, raising energy, mm -hmm. and I hope that all of those sun fuzzies that were taken home, you know, have a have a nice glowy spot. Yes. <laughs> Especially as we enter the dark half of the year, and who knows what will be in the future, and we might actually need our energy right. at different times. So I'm sure I'm going to be going back to my sun my my sun fuzzy <laughs> come you know September October December. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and just, uh, to let you guys know, in case you've been hearing a couple of extra sounds, I don't know how well this mic pick sounds up, but, uh, David and Amber's kiddo, Xander, is here also, um, and has been joyfully playing on his tablet over in the corner and giggling. <laughs> um, but yeah, if there's no, uh, final thoughts, I think that's r a pretty good, uh, recap for us. So uh, that was our Midsummer Ritual, Nordic story of the Suna, uh, went over really well. And uh, next, on August 7th, we're going to be having Lunasa, which, uh, as David mentioned earlier, was, it will be co-led by David and myself, uh, the story of Lou and his foster mother, Tiatu. So stay tuned for that, and stay tuned for our next episode of Part the Mist, where we'll be talking about all the amazing things that happened at uh, Beyond the Gates. Uh, Beyond the Gates. Uh, Beyond the Gates.